Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to do a full range review for the Adeptus Custodes. This is not, in fact, my idea. This is an idea from a user by the name of Synthas, who commented on the video talking about the cancellation of Warhammer Fest and all the stuff at Warhammer, just all the events ever, basically, cancelled now. Um... And I'd mentioned in that video that I'm going to be trying to do more videos for you guys. I know a lot of you are stuck at home. You've got people who are self-isolating, who are quarantined in lockdown, or just, you know, have had to work from home. And I wanted to try and provide a bit more entertainment and a bit more stuff to keep everyone sane through this weird, wibbly-wobbly timeline that we seem to be going through at the moment. The idea was put forward of looking at each faction and going through what we like, what we don't like. And I really liked the idea of that because we can do that for literally everything. We can go through every faction of every range, including Forge World, and I'm going to include Forge World specifically for Adeptus Custodes because there's a lot of Adeptus Custodes stuff on Forge World, funnily enough. So yeah, we're going to start there. We was just going to do alphabetical order, but to be fair, the Adeptus Rorita stuff has all come out very recently, so I thought I'd save them for last as they have got a bunch of new stuff over the last few months, and we've talked about it a lot over the last few months anyway. Custodes are middling in terms of releases now they've been out for a little bit so we can go back and take a look and we are just gonna not gonna go through every single kit because you know multiples of these kits can be used to build multiples of diff you know what i mean the kits can be made to do different things we're gonna start with captain general trajan valoris and i have to admit it's not the strongest start for me this is one of those rare characters that i just don't like all that much and i i've managed to pinpoint the things that I don't like. The only things that I have trouble with are the giant feathers. So he's got the massive feathers behind the shield there. I quite like the shield. It's fancy. It's a bit big, but it's fancy. The feathers I don't really like very much. And the kind of robe over the front of his armor I don't like very much. The big cloak at the back is badass. Not at all practical, of course, but it's badass. And I really like that. But I think with the little bit of cloth at the front, there's just a bit too much cloth. There's just a bit too much going on there. I would prefer to have just the kind of armor segments going down the front between the legs and to leave the like the, the roby bits and just have the cloak. I feel like that would that would do it for me. I'd be a lot happier. Not a huge fan of the face, but then if you know me, then you know that I don't like bare heads on models, as I say every single time, and so that's just bound to bug me anyway. There's very few models where I look at it and go, yes, yes, that is a bare head that I can get on with. Just not a fan overall, and I mean, it's fine. It's a fine head, but I just prefer him to have a fancy helmet with a big old plume, because, I mean, it's custodial. He's got to have a big old plume on the helmet, and there's no plume there. He's got the feathers, but there's no plume. The axe, I always like those axes because they're so ridiculous. It is a bolter and a power axe at the same time. What more could you possibly want? It's overall a decent model. There's just a couple of things that I'm not a huge fan of on it, unfortunately. Now, moving on, we've got the Alaris Custodians. Now, I absolutely love these. I love them. Absolutely love them. These are what what made my Empress children happen. For ages I've wanted to do Empress children and I just couldn't find the right kit and I couldn't find a way of turning the Chaos Terminators into exactly what I wanted, which was something super fancy, super like gilded and ornamented and ostentatious and over the top. It just wasn't really a thing. And there wasn't anything that really suited the overall look of of the Emperor's children outside of like the Forge World Terminators, which I do like, but I wanted to convert my own, but I just couldn't find the right base model for it. This is the base model for it. You know, I, I now have five Terminators um, for my Emperor's children, and they are made out of these guys because the armor is exactly what I wanted. It's over the top, kind of ostentatious and heavily ornamented. You've got all of the like the wing and feather motifs, and you've got these little gems and bits of filigree and it's it's perfect for that. It's absolutely perfect for that. Including having the uh, the cloaks as well. Like the it's not technically a cloak. I don't know what you call it because it's only from the waist down at the back. But I I absolutely love these models. I think they are really nice. They're really nice to put together. They're really easy to kit bash. They're very easy to like. You can take stuff off and put stuff on, and it doesn't really make any difference to how well they are put together. And the poses 
can be a little bit hit and miss. That's the one thing that is maybe a little bit of a struggle occasionally is you'll sometimes some pieces will not quite work with the shape of the torso, but that's only if you're doing masses of kit bashing and converting. Just as standard basic models, these look really, really good. And they look good from every angle as well. And there's a good number of options in this kit. I will say, I've got a lot of uh, a lot of mileage out of this kit. Because you've got the you've got the axe or you've got the um you've got the guardian spear as well. And those little spikes on the end of the axes, they are perfect for sticking on chaos vehicles. <laughs> you can actually get a good number of spikes off like two kits of these. And there's all sorts of little decorations and ornaments and stuff that you can use. The plumes I've used on so many things that it's unreal. I mean, one of my one of my Emperor's Children Terminators has got three of those plumes on his armor, uh, just because why not? Got to be fancy. You've got to be fancy. And the uh, the Misericordius as well. Those those are pretty versatile. They come in handy. You can put them on a lot of stuff. Overall, absolutely love that kit. It's a great kit. Now. The Vertus Praetors, I really like. I just have not had chance to find anything to do with them yet. They will become something Chaos-based at some point. I just don't know what. I just don't know what to run them as. I've got no idea. I did originally think maybe doing, like, Warp Raptors or, or, or like, like sorry, Warp Talons or whatever, but they're the wrong shape. The unit profile is, like, wait, the model profile is way too big. You can't... They just aren't jet bikes for Chaos. So maybe run them as normal bikes, but then would that even work because they are flying and it would look a bit weird? I'm still trying to find a way to work out how to use them because, again, they just look really, really good. It is kind of insulting to the Dark Angels, to be honest. You know, when uh, when What's-His-Name is going around on the last jet bike in the Imperium and then it turns out that the Adeptus Custodes have got a shed load of them just lying about. Absolutely, just, you know, just grab a jet bike, it's fine, we've got loads. A little bit, <laughs> that was a little bit weird, but it's 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 fine. I do like the models themselves, outside of the whole conversion potential. The only thing that strikes me as a bit weird, and always has done and always will do, is the, the way the, the legs are done. So you've got like these kind of riding leathers around the, around the legs, which I, I like, I like the look of. It, it's just a weird choice. It's just an odd choice. I'm not sure where that came from, but it's the only bit of the model that is a bit off to me. Everything else I really like. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're good. They're good. They look good. They also... Actually, I, I wouldn't say they look like they can fly, <laughs> but they don't have the, the same issue that a lot of uh, Imperium vehicles have where you look at them and go, oh, it's another box. They don't have that problem, which is which is nice. Which is nice. It's nice to have something that actually looks a bit sleek and curvy and, and not like a shoebox with wings every now and again. I really like that model. Okay, so the Vexilus Praetor in Terminator armor, that's obviously the same as the Alaris Custodians, uh, same as the Shield Captain. The Custodian Wardens. Now, that kit can also be used to build the Shield Captain and the Custodian Guard Squad. Again, I, the way you've got so much stuff packed into these kits is something I still I still really quite like. I think they've done a good job with with keeping like the kit number is low, but the number of options is high. The hats on these guys are, are a bit excessive. I'm not going to lie, be a bare head there again. Um, see that 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 to me it, that. Looks a bit better than Trajan Valoris to my mind, I, I, but I'm not really sure why. I couldn't really tell you why. I think it might be the lack of feathers, although the the lack of kind of big symbol behind his head is not. Uh, he, he could do with something a little bit extra, but there's something about him that I just prefer a little bit more to the actual named character. Um, oh, the spear's getting cut off. Hang on. There we go. I like the overall look of these, to be fair, but the hats are. I know they're not really hats, I know they're helmets, but still, the hats are, are maybe a bit much. I know they're I know they're custodies and it's supposed to be a bit much, but I I don't know. I don't know. They they lose something. They lose something, those ones. I'm pretty sure the other ones don't have the uh the the, the eagle on the front. Or if they do, it's a bit more 
It's a bit more delicate. Is that the right phrase to use? We'll, we'll have a check in a second. But overall, they are nice models. I think I think I prefer cloaks rather than the kind of robe situation that you have around the legs. To be honest, I think I would prefer prefer just full on a full on cloak instead. Um, for thinking about it, no, this kit can't. I don't think this kit can build the other two. Let's just have a quick, a quick check. So a shield captain or vexless praetor. So actually, no, maybe you can. But yeah, I do like it overall. But I weirdly prefer just the standard, the standard one, like the standard custodian guard squad. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know why I prefer them. The pictures are slightly worse quality. That's interesting. Yeah, there is something that they do both have the. They do both have the the eagle on the hat, but for some reason, the other ones look a bit more chunky. Is that the word? I don't know. I feel like that's slightly different. Let's check. Let's go back up and let's check. Real time check. Hat check. Real time hat check. Let's have a look. Now, am I imagining it, or is yeah? No, they they. It's because they're different. They're different. They're different eagle hats. That's what it is. So yeah, on these, the the wings are kind of swept further back, and they're not as tall, and they've got more kind of feather shape to them. These, they go further up, not quite as far back, and there aren't as many. I don't think there are quite as many kind of feathers. But they're more defined, the ones that there are. Maybe that's why I like them more. There's just it just looks a bit more streamlined on that one. Yeah, it, it looks a bit more streamlined. It kind of looks like they wanted to make the helmets for these guys look different, but they weren't really sure how to do it. It was like, well, we need them to not be exactly the same, but to have a similar motif. So what do we do? And they just squished the wings on the eagle. Stick a couple of extra gems on, but apart from that, I actually, I actually prefer this 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 lot to the others. To be honest, they, yeah, I think I prefer the models. They're kind of overall the same. I hate it when it does that. Hang on, they're overall the same, but there's just little differences that make these look a bit better to my eye. Maybe maybe it's because they're a little less ornate. A little less over the top. I'm not sure. I have used this this exact kit to make some chosen for my uh, Empress children. Again, I I just took the base kit. I stuck em um, Chaos backpacks over the backs, and I used Space Marine and Chaos Space Marine arms and weapons and uh, Chaos Space Marine shoulder pads. Um, that was before the new Chaos kits came out. And again, they they work super well for making Empress children stuff out of. Yeah, I think I do prefer the Custodian Guard Squad, and yeah, I'm thinking now. I think about it, the um, these guys you you only make those out of that kit, but you can make the uh, the Shield Captain and the Custodian Guard Squad out of that one. We're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about the uh, the Venerable Dreadnought because it's the plastic Contemptor Dread, which is the worst value kit that Games Workshop do by far. It's just a monopose crappy kit. Don't like it. Don't like it at all. I think it's rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. There is the Venerable Land Raider. Again, it's just a Land Raider. It's just a Land Raider. So yeah, you can make the the Vexless Praetor and the Shield Captain out of the Custodian Wardens as well. Um, yeah, so I mean, you've got two kits that can make characters as well as just the standard troops or, well, not standard troops, but sort of another unit as well. It's. I think it's a. I think it's a decent way of doing it. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. I mean, to be honest, if you're going to spend thirty-five quid, then like the individual characters, if you were to buy them, would be twenty-two to twenty-five anyway. If you're going to buy Vexless Pre Praetor or a, or a Shield Captain, they would be expensive to begin with. I mean, Captain General Trajan Valoris, that is an HQ unit. That is twenty-two pounds fifty for. 10 what 12 pound 50 more you're getting your hq and you're also getting the better part of an entire squad as well or a bunch of bits if you don't want to make that squad so 
in terms of like having to buy a whole kit for for like a single character, I really don't mind it at all with these guys. Yeah, Valerian and Alea we talked about recently. Valerian's head is is terrible. I just don't like the head at all. I, I just yeah no no it doesn't do it doesn't do it for me the head. Alea looks fine. My, my my main issue with Alea, if that data sheet was anything to go by, is that she can't use the misericordia that she's got on her belt. But Valerian is is I mean he's he's fine. He's mostly just a standard standard shield captain. He's got a fancy laurel wreath over his head and he's got a stupid expression. But beyond that, it, that's a model that's easily easily turned into something that looks pretty good just by sticking an actual helmet on him. Um, we just need actual tons of the Emperor stuff now. That's what we really want. And yeah, as I say, the Venerable Land Raider, it's fine, it's a Land Raider. You can't, it, there's nothing wrong with it, it just doesn't look as fancy as it should for belonging to the Adeptus Custodians, in my opinion. That is a massive amount of money. £412.50 for the Fury of Terror Shield Host. If you wanted to grab it, you could. Probably better to just buy the individual components from a third party retailer for cheaper. Okay, Forge World. Let's have a look at Forge World. So let's start with a let's start character wise again. Let's go straight for the the shield captain here. Now, similar issue to Trajan Valoris in a way. I don't like the head very much. I think it'd be better suited with a a helmet. But again, that could just be personal taste. I actually prefer the uh, the, the the spear. I like the blade on it a little bit better. It looks interesting. It looks slightly different. I'm not sure why I prefer it, but I do. The shape is just more... I don't know, it just looks older. Just older and more interesting, which makes sense, because, you know, the Forge World stuff is also Horus Heresy, so the the bolter design is older anyway. But it looks more more relic -y, more ancient relic -y to me. I quite like the pose and the armor. That's all fine. It's uh, again, it's just the head. I'm not a big fan of. But I will say, I think the model is improved not by having that front bit of cloth like Trajan Valoris has and having the uh, the kind of belts instead. I think that makes quite a big difference to the way this model looks. Overall, quite like it. Quite like that one. There's so much fancy stuff. So the uh, Ares gunship. Let's let's go for some of the bigger, chunkier models. I. Don't mind it. It's okay. It's a weird design. I quite like the fact that it's a weird design. The kind of gap over the back there, where what I'm assuming is the back end of the weapon is plugged in, is really odd to me. Um, it feels weird for the sake of being weird on this one. Don't know why you wouldn't just put a bit of armour over the top, or indeed the underneath of it, because it's, as you can see, there's a big gap underneath. Um, but I do like that it is something very different. There's not really anything else in the Imperium like it, which is a positive thing, to be honest. And there are lots of nice little details. You want to, uh, if you're going to do that, you can need to do the the um, transfers or freehand yourself. Good luck if you go for that route. <laughs> uh, really like the amount of detail on the engines as well. I really like those. Yeah, overall, overall, that's it's quite a nice model. It is quite a nice model. Hellish expensive though, at two hundred and eighty nine pounds. It is chunky, to be fair. To be fair, it's a chunky, a chunky animal, but still, that's quite the outlay. Speaking of which, we may as well go straight onto the uh, Orion Assault dropship. Now you, you can see, hopefully, what I mean with the compartment thing. So similar design, similar wings. Uh, in fact, I think they've got the same same engine. Yeah, same engines. The front design is very similar between the two, as is the wing design as well. I think they're a bit thicker, a bit a bit chunkier on the Orion dropship, but the Orion Orion dropship has the uh, advantage of actually having a fully armored top, and I assume a fully armored bottom. Although yes, it is, which it just makes the kind of open plan design of the other one a little bit weirder to me because it's like, well, could they have not put the weapon in there without taking the 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 roof and the arse off it? But I'm not I'm not a, a designer for the uh, Custodes aircraft, so there may be a very viable functional reason for that. 
it is a chunky vehicle again though it is it is it is beefy it is real beefy i love the sheer number of sensors and stuff going on in the front of it as well there's yeah again it's just got so much detail so much detail on it and it is a hefty lad which i mean it needs to be again at 289 quid it's it's expensive it is expensive Oh, that's some rough feathering work in Photoshop at the bottom of that picture. Oh dear, I kind of regret clicking on that one now. Model, good. The, uh, yeah, no, you needed to bring that in a little bit further before you feathered it, but that's fine. Okay. We, uh, well, hang on, let's find the, we'll find the jet bikes in non-massive numbers. Uh, that'll be easier to look at. Oh, the, Ven the Venatari squad. I really like these. I really like them. These are a cool squad. They're weird. I mean, Forge will really have pushed the weird envelope for for uh, the custody stuff. It is. It, they are mad models, but I really like them. Got the Captain America uh, Wakanda shield there. <laughs> it's clearly what it was. I mean, I say it's clearly what it was based on. When did these come out? When did they start designing them? I don't know. Maybe they weren't. Maybe that's slanderous. But it, it looks pretty. You know what I mean. I really like the jump packs on these more than anything else, to be honest. They're not—they're just so much more sleek and stylized than just the here's two rocket boosters for the Space Marines. Like that's—it's pretty much what it feels like they get. Whereas these guys get something just so much more refined and and stylish. Got the little eagle's head above the intake thing behind his head. They are more lightly armored. Like they do seem to just have trousers on with greaves over their boots. But kind of, I don't know, every now and again I'm like, oh, maybe full armour would have been nicer, but they pull it off. They pull it off. They've got a look. They've got a look and they're owning the look. It's a, it's a decent look. Also the kind of um, more aerodynamic spear with the smaller gun as well. That's a cool pose as well. No idea what difference those wings would actually make in terms of trying to control these, but who cares? Who cares? It's rule of cool. Half this stuff in 40k would never function anyway, so <laughs> what does it matter? And of course, if you uh, put them on something that aren't the god-awful flying stands, you'll have a much better time of it overall. All bare heads, which I'm not a big fan of. I know they've got the rebreathers on, but I, again, I prefer helmets, but that's just me. I don't know if there is a, a helmeted option for these guys. I don't think there is. Actually, I think that's just what you get. But you could easily you could easily do something to uh, stick a few helmets on them if you didn't like it. Which is, if I eventually get these, what exactly what I'll do. Well, you can see the detail really nicely there. If you, uh, without the paint on, brings it out a little bit more. So fancy. So shiny and so fancy. That's why we like them. Okay, the Caladius Grav Tank. A more reasonable 89 instead of 289, but then it's not as big, obviously. Again, I do like these because they look totally different to most of the Imperium stuff. They're, they're sleeker. They're, the design is just just that little bit more futuristic. It's more future tech. It's less box and more more rounded edges. Feels very forbidden technology, given what the Imperium normally has. And I think that's a tank that looks good from literally every angle. There is no angle from which that doesn't look cool. It just looks nice, no matter which way you slice it. Oh, man. If I ever did do Horus Heresy, I think it would end up being Custodes, to be honest. Relatively easy-ish to paint, because you've got the... You just need to do gold, a bit of red. Hardly need any numbers, because, well, they're Custodes. So tempting. So badly tempting. Okay, so the Telemon Heavy Dreadnought is a work of art. I do have one. Um, a good friend of mine, Scarlet, very kindly sent me one, which I'm, which has been turned into a demon prince for my Empress children. So, yeah. But actually, having one for Custodes would be fun. It's, so, it's just so beefy. It's so beefy, but it looks so functional. Again, it just doesn't look like it doesn't look like a box. The Custodes, like, that's the thing. The Custodes stuff just looks more 
capable <laughs> in a lot of situations, like the Dreadnought being one of those situations. Don't get me wrong, I love my Contemptors. I've got three of them. I love my Leviathans. I've got two of those. They are wonderful, gorgeous kits, and I, I can't get enough of them. I'm going to end up with another Leviathan soon enough anyway. But when you look at a Leviathan and then look at this... It just has an extra layer of 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 refinement, is what it boils down to. And having put this together, it's really nice and easy to put together as well. It's a really nice kit to assemble, even if you do end up sticking wings on it. It is such a good kit. Similar similar situation for the Aculus Dreadnought, which I again I really like. The heads, I'm not a massive fan of in a way. The kind of uh, enlarged lower half of the helmet, I'm not sure I'm a big fan of. But I really wish you'd stop making these previews a tiny Forge World. I don't know why you're doing that. But again, it's it's it is just it's just a contemptor, but with added fancy. <laughs> That's all it is. But you get a massive spear with it as well. Which just makes it look even more badass. I'm assuming this would be a really nice kit to put together as well. Maybe one day I'll find out. One day. Who knows? Who knows what the future could bring? It's probably going to bring more Dreadnoughts, let's be honest. Yeah, again, just the detail is crazy. So chunky. Okay, the Sagittarium Guard... Now, I reckon these have got some of the coolest helmets of, of any squad in 40k. I really like the helmets on these guys. I'm not, I'm not sure why I like them as much as I do, but they, they just look cool. They don't have the plume, they don't have the distinctive plume, but uh, they, look, they just look all business. They look like enforcers. <laughs> That's the only way I can think I can like think to describe it. They look like the law is what they look like. You mess up, this guy shows up, you're in trouble. That's what that's what it feels like. With the helmets and the guns and the just how stocky and massive they are. There's just bulk there. I think because they're holding a massive bolter, there just seems to be like added bulk to them. Just, I mean, look at the girth. Look at the girth on the lad. Yeah, it's it's like a it's just a, an upgrade upgrade set for the um custodian guard but they look really they look really cool i don't know why i like them so much they just look like they're going to ruin your day somehow even more than the normal ones do these guys look like they're going to ruin it more they look so dis weirdly dispassionate and just i don't know, it, 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 it's just <laughs> I don't know why I get such almost like Judge Dread vibes out of it because that's obviously not what they are at all. Before anyone says, "Oh, how could you possibly equate that?" I, I've been saying now it makes no sense, but it's just something about it. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It's a really good kit. Okay, and then we have the uh, unfortunately named Coronas <laughs> Grav Carrier. Oh. Age like milk. Okay. Yeah, again. Again, it, it's just... It's so different to everything else the Imperium does. Fits in well with the rest of the Custody stuff, obviously, as it would. But it, it just looks so much more fancy. So much more fancy and different. And again, an absurd amount of detail. With a ridiculous number of sensors and lenses on the front. Which is... Yeah, painting that. Fun. Fun for all the family. Or not fun, depending on how you look at it. The size of it is actually pretty decent as well, for how much it is. I mean, that's, what, 121? That's not too bad. Okay, so there's also the Contemptor Galatus? Galatus? Galatus. Sure. That's probably wrong anyway. Uh, Dreadnought. Which again, just super fancy, super fancy Contemptor. With a sword that's also a flamer, I believe, for for flamey sword goodness. Massive shield. The uh, the the kind of the arm. I think the arms being rounded is what makes a big difference to these. Really sets them aside. Makes them look uh, 
just that bit more refined and less chunky, even though the vast majority of it is is I mean it's not basic contemptor, but it's normal contemptor structure with a bit of added fancy on the plates. But the shoulders do a lot to set it apart. It has a slightly different silhouette, which is actually I think a little bit of an achievement given how similar it is overall to your standard contemptor. Now of course having a sword and a shield makes makes a bit of difference as well. <laughs> Such a ridiculous shit sword, look at it. Oh, it's great. I feel like with these you need to have an action pose. I much prefer like the, the kind of moving forward pose to the standing at the ready pose. They look more more way more dynamic when you when you have them posed like that. Okay. So the Aqualon Terminators with Infernus Fire Pikes. I prefer the bodies of these Terminators over the plastic ones, but I prefer the heads from the plastic ones over the heads on these. Mixing the two would be ideal for me. That would be perfect. It would be expensive, but it would be perfect. The war gear on them looks cool. The overall size and like structure of the, of the armor just looks a bit more solid. It looks a bit more... I don't know, it just looks a bit more chunky. But the heads just don't quite do it for me. The helmets just don't quite do it for me on these. I do much prefer the plastic helmets off the Alaris Terminators. But everything else I really like. Oh, that's a bit of a rough rotation on this one, isn't it? I think as well. Are those just the normal power claws off a... Off like a... No, no, they're not. They're thicker. They're beefier. Yeah, the, the shoulders especially on these look super, super chunky. They don't look quite as manoeuvrable as the others, but they do look they do look really decent. And there's, again, I, 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 some of the photos of these aren't that great, in fact, but like there they look a lot better. But still, still prefer the heads off the other ones. Again, just in bare resin, though, you can just see a stupid amount of detail on them. They look good. They do look good. Okay. So much. Well, I mean, the Talamon has just got a different weapon. But you've got the uh, the Calidus Grav Tank Annihilator, which I think is the anti-tank version of it. You've got, a, you know, you've got the standard Aquiline Terminators. The uh, Palace Grav Tank is quality. Little nippy... Little nippy, little nippy lad there. <laughs> it's borderline cute. <laughs> like, it shouldn't be cute, but it is. It's like a little wee baby tank. I'm assuming it's only got one crew member, because it's small. At least I think it's small. I'm pretty sure it's pretty small. It looks small. That looks like a little, like a star, like a starfighter or something more than anything else to me. Looks like something you find in EVE Online. That's not a bad thing, though. Look at it! Look at it go! Okay, let's. Yeah, it, yeah, little tiny baby tank. <laughs> Must protect it at all costs. Okay, and uh, the the jet bikes are immense, absolutely immense. The rest of those are just weapons options, so we won't go through the rest of that. But uh, but yeah, there is a couple of there's there's uh, <laughs> the jet bikes look so good. They've got the massive jousting spears. Of course, you've got to have those. Excellent classic heads. I, I, I think the best heads, those ones. I think those are just plastic riders. I may be wrong, though. I haven't actually properly examined anything beyond the bike itself before. But it is a, it is, it is a cool bike. I like the uh, having that weapon straight down the centre as well. The thing is, it's a totally different design to the ones from 40k. You know, the ones from 40k have kind of got that weird bulge in the middle, and uh, well, and I say totally different. It's not totally different, but the ones in 40k seem to be a bit shorter, a bit more chunky. They've got like the segmented lines down the center, and these are a bit a bit longer. Yeah, they they do look good though. Really, there's not much in the Custodius line that I don't 
that I don't like. There's just things I prefer over other stuff. There's definitely things I prefer over other stuff, but for the most part, they look pretty solid. Oh, that's a nice red they've got on that. And uh, the other one is the G G G Gaia Falcon. Gear Falcon, which I'm not entirely sure what the difference is, actually. <laughs> Looking at it, it looks to be pretty much the same thing. So I'm not sure why that's its own different thing, because there's a Guy Falcon and there's the Agamatis pattern, but they both seem to be the same. So I'm not sure what I'm missing there. But it is a full resin rider, it's not the plastic rider stuck on these, so that answers that question that I had earlier. Only for myself, admittedly. You probably already knew that, but... Yeah, nice, nice, nice models, pretty much all round. few things that are better than others, but overall, I think they've got some of the best-looking dreads. They've definitely got some of the best-looking dreads. I mean, the, the Talamon and the uh, the Aculus both look really, really good. The Calidus, I think, is the... Caladius, probably is the way to pronounce it. I like that as a as a... It's like a four-wheel vehicle option. It seems reasonably, I say reasonably, still 89 quid, but it doesn't seem massively overpriced. The price of the gunship and the dropship are both super extreme. Um, the Vanitari squad is great as well. Really, the only, the only, the only weak, weak bits for me for these guys are some of the heads look really, look really rough. The Custodian Wardens just don't do it for me in the same way that the uh, Custodian Guard Squad does. Um, the Dawn Eagle Jet Bikes, I think I might prefer a little bit over the Forge World versions, actually, looking at it again. I think I do prefer the design just that little bit, but I'm not really sure why. They're definitely a bit more over the top. They're not as reserved, which... Hmm, I don't know. Then the uh, Custodians, like the Custodian Terminators, are just amazing. They, they gave me what I wanted for my Empress children, so I can't possibly complain about those. Unless we say about that bloody monopose plastic contempt of the better. Overall, I think the Custody stuff is like one of the properly solid lines that Games Workshop does. Everything is nice and thematic. The gap between the, uh, the, gap between the 40k and 30k is not that wide. There are some significant differences in terms of vehicle design, but the vehicles that you have access to from Forge World all share a similar design and really if you're going to be doing some sort of contempt you'd probably want to be doing one of the actual custody specific ones anyway um so it's not it's not too big a thing the venatari and the uh like the sagittarium guard just use the 40k kit which makes a big difference but like the aquilon terminators they fit in they do fit in next to the alarus custodians and the the, the Dawn Eagle jet bikes that you get from the for, for 40k stuff do fit in with the uh, with the Agamatis ones as well. They don't look totally different. The infantry all having pretty much the same design helps a huge amount, obviously, but they are all recognisably very much exactly the same, like exactly the same faction, even if there are little differences from one to the other. Like you know full you know exactly what you're getting when you when you look at either the Forge World or 40k range for these guys. And everything lines up really neatly. In terms of like gameplay and stuff, they're super easy force to collect. They're not that difficult to paint. And with them being a small elite army, you don't actually need to buy that much to get a decent points value out of them. I think they're one of the, they are, I think, probably trickier to play than 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 some armies, but if you're just looking to get started and just do just do small elite forces to dip your toe in and just have a mess about, then I think they're a pretty strong contender, to be honest. Because as I say, you don't need to be a, an expert painter to get a decent paint job out of them, because you just need gold spray, a little bit of red here and there, and uh, and some, some silver to do some of the more techie bits, and you, you're not that far off having a decent looking force. And you don't have to spend a shed load to get a nice a nice sized army points wise either. I mean get two boxes of bikes and you're well on your way to having something decent. So yeah, I mean I I really I really like the Custodes lineup. I think it's one of the stronger lineups that they've got. Like as as a as a range as a whole. 
it's nice and consistent over both both Games Workshop and Forge World. And if you really want to go for it, you know, the Forge World options, they look really nice. They look super nice. And actually, 60 quid for the Contemptor is not terrible. It could be worse, and 80 for the Talon, again, is not terrible. It's pretty much in line with the Legion stuff for the most part, but you do get more ornamentation and stuff from uh, from both. They do just look fancier. So, yeah. Like the Custody stuff overall. So, it's a nice lineup. It's a nice lineup. It looks good. Thank you very much for watching slash listening to that 40 minute long ramble. I hope that has done something to lighten your mood and the day. If you uh, have any particular comments or you have any particular views on the um, Adeptus Custodes, then do let me know in the comments below. If you've had any experience putting together any of those big beasties from Forge World, then I would like to read about that in the comments. If you've if you've put together one of the big 300 quid monsters, because they look they look good, but how much of that comes down to being a pain to assemble, I don't know. You'll have to tell us. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to click all the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. And, uh, of course, there is an affiliate link in the description for Element Games where you'll be able to buy a shed load of the custody stuff. Um, not the Forge World stuff, obviously, the Games Workshop stuff. But if you use that link, I get something for sending you that way. You save a bunch of money on the plastic crack you're going to buy anyway. Some of it goes to charity at the end of the month. It's a nice way to support the channel if you would like to. But I leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.